Los Angeles, the land of big dreams, flourishing creativity, progressive policies, tropical beaches, and diverse culture, or a dystopian hellscape overflowing with uncontrollable criminals, rampant substance abuse, abominable infrastructure, abysmal city planning, and the most insufferable, fake, egotistical, hypocritical people on planet Earth. Well, to preface this video, I'm sure some of you live in LA, and I'm sure you're all nice people, okay? So especially for you guys, I thought I'd include a quick section things I like about LA. Number one, a cheeseburger. Apparently it was invented in LA, as well as the egg muck muffin. Two, abundant sunbathing opportunities. The weather's perfect and you got beautiful bodies of water like the LA River and the shark infested riptide laden North Pacific Ocean. Or if you really want to get that tan going, Death Valley National Park. Number three, uh, Hassan's house. I like it because Hassan has Wow Mao locked in the basement editing TikToks and I appreciate him getting rid of all my competition on this platform. Number four, California City. Now not many people know about this suburban city in Los Angeles County, but personally I really like the architecture of every single house they built here. And number five, all the good comedy, films, music and art that's come out of Los Angeles over the years. After all, LA is the entertainment capital of America. I mean the electric guitar was literally invented here. However, the problem with LA being the American entertainment capital is that realistically it's just the place where art gets turned into commercial products that people like this guy can make billions off. This is perfectly portrayed by some of the low-key demonic talk shows based out of LA. <laughs> James Corden has got to be the most American British person ever and he possesses one of the most defining LA personality traits. He's too happy. Everyone in LA is too happy blood. They all think they're main characters or something. Shouting down their iPhone 15s with all their shiny white teeth glistening in the sun. I really think that if any of these delusionally happy LA freaks were forced to eat a soggy Tesco meal deal waiting at a freezing wet bus stop sat next to a passed out cheese head in the outskirts of Birmingham them, they would just revert back into being normal humans. Angelinos have got to be the most clout-minded people on the planet. You can get anything in LA if you got some clout. For example, Big Arnold was the state governor for eight years. Now, I think the guy was great in Terminator, but what the f*** does he know about governing a state? This is just a famous old man from Austria with a severely lower than average brain capacity due to taking enough anabolic steroids to kill a dinosaur in the 70s. Really, Los Angeles? is just a valley full of hopeful people trying to achieve their dreams which sounds nice but ends up as a pyramid of fragile egos in which each individual is desperately leeching off whoever is the next level up in a frantic thrashing competition to get from the deep sea to the twilight zone and I think the peak of this LA main character syndrome is the internet niche where so-called influencers film themselves giving out money to homeless people on skid row either to make profit or to make clout that leads to profit or just purely to stroke their own egos but like oh congratulations bro you just funded like 27 fent over and people will applaud this stuff in the comments saying like yo politicians would never help these people out like you do and I think the target audience for this type of content is like Republican dads and I find it so funny when patriotic Americans who love their financial individualism also wonder why their downtown is full of medics and why the politicians they vote for don't do anything to help this crisis bro this system you are so proud of literally incentivizes doctors to prescribe people thousands of medications they don't need the selling of medicine in the US is literally a pyramid scheme just instead of getting Sigma males to sign up to hustlers university we're getting vulnerable Americans addicted to opiates Blow. leading to drug <coughs> epidemics like what we see in downtown LA specifically Skid Row this area is pretty much a no-go zone even though you can still find hipsters munching away on their avocado toast in these apartment blocks looking out of their penthouse windows appreciating the gritty urban environment hipsters have absolutely taken over the hoods of LA I mean there are literally literally coffee roasteries in f***ing huh? Compton. Despite this being the situation on the streets, LA is one of the most expensive cities in America. We're talking Switzerland level prices. We're talking Monaco level prices. We're talking Iceland level prices. Not the shop, the country. So to demonstrate how expensive LA really is, I opened up Zillow and set my location to Los Angeles. How much do you think this old crusty bungalow is going for? Pause the video right now and make your guess. And... 
2.8 million dollars. What about this literal bando which was absolutely destroyed in a fire? If you look closely, there's no roof. Also, instead of a garden, the house backs onto a constantly congested, noisy, fume emitting five lane freeway. And across the street, there's what looks to be a rubbish dump. Take your guesses, folks. 400 grand for a f***ing bando. All right, finally, we got this one. It's got a pool and a fire pit, guys. So you already know we're talking big money. And whilst it's obviously nicer than all the others we've seen so far, it's still one story tall. Remember, this is just a glorified flashy bungalow. All right, pause the vid and make your guess now. You are wrong. It was huh? none of these options on the screen because this house is currently on sale for $85 million. Maybe after seeing these ludicrous properties, prices you get a better idea why so many people live in tents out of the american homeless population 40 percent are employed and work jobs they literally just can't afford housing but to really get your empathy going you can watch me doing a homeless challenge for 48 hours in la whilst i get thousands of dollars in ad revenue to fund my cool venice beach artsy hippie house where me and my politically correct friends make thought-provoking content skid row is only one of the many neglected and unsanitary parts of Los Angeles. Another example is the LA River. Once a picturesque, crystal clear, gold rich waterway, now is one of the most polluted flowing bodies of water in the world. Basically, the snowmelt and rainwater from up here just passes through the city, sucking up so much industrial and urban waste that it consistently reaches a hundred times more E. coli than the federal guidelines allow. And it finishes by dumping potentially lethal bacteria, lead, mercury, chromium, dioxide and many many more dangerous substances right into the San Pedro Bay a popular swimming spot for tourists and Los Angeles alike but there's another massive water-based problem in LA uh, lawns that's right look at all these lush green American lawns in the middle of what should be the desert yeah Californians are so proud of their stupid lawns that they're willing to risk hefty fines poisoning their entire garden using paint or more importantly potentially causing devastating environmental disasters this is because LA is naturally super, super dry. They get all their water funneled down from Northern California. This really messes up the natural geography of California since the ground in the North doesn't get as much water as it naturally should because it's all funneled South. And in the South, crops and plants are grown where they're not naturally meant to exist. Essentially, the Northern plants dry up enough to become fuel for fire and the Southern ground acquires plants which act as fuel for fire. That paired with the recent dry winters and record breaking hot summers inevitably provides the perfect circumstances for record level wildfires i don't know i guess you guys must just love those annual xl bonfires you've been hosting for the last few years and whilst the cause of these fires might seem very obvious and simple to you and me some americans have taken to blaming wildfires on for example ufos who've somehow used lasers to set all of california on fire i do actually think this map of ufo sightings explains explains all you need to know about the type of people that live in Los Angeles. But can you really blame them when they have some of the worst public schools in the country? Uh, edit, it turns out the private schools are just as bad crazy and awful. And obviously kids being unable to access an acceptable level of education has a clear correlation with homelessness. But no, I don't want to use my damn money to fund no damn public sector. But I also don't understand why people are so damn stupid and can't get jobs nowadays and have to live in homeless camps. Guys, God dang it. Regarding schools though, I don't even know how kids are supposed to get there in LA. I don't know about you guys, but when I was young, me and 95% of my classmates walked to school or got the bus. Can you guess what percentage of LA commuters walk? 2%! Bro, no wonder you guys have that problem everyone makes fun of you for. And I find it hilarious that 53% of Californians say they care deeply about their carbon footprint. Like, LA isn't even in the top 70 highest populated cities. But has the fifth highest carbon emissions in the world. I've also found that Californians like to brag about their state having the highest vegan population in America, as if that's some kind of beneficial thing for the environment, when the state's avocado and almond farms require 2.1 billion bees to be flown in from around the world annually, 30% of which die in the process. Plus these farms use around 28 billion gallons of water a day, which is literally cannonballing the state into ecological 
ecological collapse in the form of hellfire. I mean, I've got to give it to them. It really is quite the feat to not even have a population of 4 million and still rank top 5 for carbon emissions. I wonder how this is even possible. Oh, I get it. Los Angeles specifically is one of the worst controlled urban sprawls on this planet with its 26 lane highways and absolute lack of functional public transport. And I know all the America cells are right now commenting how cars are so much quicker and efficient. So explain this. It literally takes three hours to drive from one side of LA to the other with traffic jams consistently lasting hours long. Really quick and efficient, huh? It turns out building an extra 20 lanes on highways to fix traffic is like printing more money to fix inflation. You'd only think it's a good idea if you went to Los Angeles public school. In 2008, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, uh, anyway, he promised to develop a high-speed rail link from LA to San Francisco, two major West Coast metro areas which would benefit massively from high-speed rail since your current options to travel from one to the other are 1. Die of boredom festering away in a car for 6 hours Option 2. 9 hours on the Greyhound bus which will probably switch drivers like 8 times leading to around 12 hours of waiting around On this mystical journey you can expect to smell a relaxing fragrance of in and out cheese Burger farts oh being God. recirculated oh. through the bus via the AC. Or option three, uh, you could fly. American airports were originally designed to be very efficient and smooth to pass through. But ever since, y you know, they've been a bit, uh, let's say, paranoid. Which means LAX and SFO aren't really designed to accommodate stricter security checks than if you were entering the White House. So we can all add, as recommended, two hours and 59 minutes to the flight time. Oh, unless you're an Arab male that has a big you are going to be intensely interrogated by terrified airport staff for over six hours. And then we have the proposed high speed line, two and a half hours. It blows all other options out of the water. This is such an obviously good idea with so much potential to make money. I really hope no one messes this all up. 15 years later, the line has already costed 128 billion fucking dollars. They are currently planning to open stage one in the 2030s with Neva Los Angeles or San Francisco as part of it. Oh, that's right. They did the middle bit first. Apparently so the government can gauge the profit margins and public reception and then hopefully fund the rest. Uh, the only problem is that the whole of this middle bit looks a bit like... That's right, instead of addressing any of the issues in our state, like public education or homelessness that Geopold has already addressed in this video, we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars connecting the two booming, well-known, iconic Californian cities, Merced and Bakersfield. <laughs> I do find it funny how some of the Americans I've been referencing in this video would collapse out of sheer mental pain if they had to pay a dollar of their money to the government to be used to provide essential education or essential healthcare or essential shelter. And these same guys don't even know the government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars building a train that connects cities like fucking Madura and Mersend and Tule. And I thought nothing could top HS2 in terms of overspending. And at this point you might be completely in despair wondering what on earth can we do to fix all these problems well my solution is we should just give this land back to Mexico. If there's anything these Angelinos need to burst their delusional, optimistic, smiley, happy bubbles, it's spicier food, high-speed trains, and more narco violence. 